Good afternoon, you beautiful, beautiful people. Welcome to a, another Hobby Nightmares video. Um, bit of a somber one this time, as you will see from the description and from the, the title of the video. But first, before I get into that, if you want to support the channel, or do you know what? If you want a good deal on some war games, uh, go to Composite Games and use the description uh, code down below, Northern Exile, to get an extra 5% off your purchase at checkout. That would give you uh, up to 25% off your models, which is almost, well, it is half of the Games Workshop staff discount. So get on there when you need some models and help out the channel as well. I'm going to stop the plugging there because I just want to do a bit more of a, shall we say, somber episode this time around. Some of these will be quite funny. Uh, one of them definitely isn't, but I will, I'll get into that as we go along. I honestly didn't mean for the music to be this sad, so bear with me. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, let's get into some hobby nightmares, shall we? Before we before we all uh, wander off. So, J4 says, uh, Hey North, brand new into the hobby and love your videos. I'm 21 from smack dab in the middle of the United States. And I just started my Orc army about a month ago, and I've since started painting about 60% of them. That's cool. The one reason why I never get into Orcs, well, simply, um, and I know people are going to say, well, you, you like Grey Knights and Space Marines, which is true. Uh, but a lot of you are going to say, well, yeah, I mean, th they're the same as well. But uh, Orcs always seem the same to me. Like Painting all that green skin just makes me cringe. But um, I love Orcs as a, as a faction. And when you read J4's story, you're going to understand why. The J4 says... He has about 1,300 points of orcs, and he's painted about 60% of them. At this point, he says, I've played five games only, and I'm having a blast. Sadly, my second and third game are a bit of a horror story combined. Flashback to three weeks ago. I'm at my local hobby store looking at models, and I meet this guy. We'll call him Clyde. I ask him how, he is, how he's going, and we have a chat about where I am at... Uh, at where I'm at with the hobby, and now I haven't played any games yet. Okay. Long story short, he asked to play some games and roll some dice. We traded numbers, and about a week goes by when he texts me for a game. It went great. Basically, I got tabled, but it was to be expected. Had some fun cinematic moments and on my end, and had an amazing time seeing my hard work on display on the table. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the best thing about the hobby for me, <clears throat> is, is seeing your army arrayed there, it's such an underrated bit. The Games Workshop don't really plug. You know, they plug playing the game, but there's something about... I, I take loads of pictures of when my army's fully arrayed and ready to go. I I, 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 love, I absolutely love it. I, I can't, can't get enough of it. Anyway, he moves on. Another week goes by, and another text to play comes from Clyde. We meet at the store and set up the game when he tells me, I have a bit of a different list last time. His very fluffy army of Black Templars with a speeder and a gun tank was now a buff bubble with a chaplain, an apothecary, a bunch of stuff I don't know what it does, and a squad of Terminators with lightning claws. Oh boy, was I in for a treat. My boy's uh, truck uh, drops, drops them right onto the objective off of his deployment zone. When he charges in with a buffed squad of Terminators, re-rolling missed hits and wounds... Uh, I'm not sure anyone does that but a chapter master, but okay. Uh, the five lightning core terminators kill my entire squad of boys, and the one with the thunder hammer smashes the engine of my truck to bits, killing it in one attack. I can already tell, man, you're a cin cinematic player, the way that you're describing this. After that, one by one, he picked off the rest of my army without me taking more than two of his intercessors. I don't think much of it, as it was my second game. Maybe he would just show me what was possible with lists. Another week goes by, and I text him to play this time. Oh, that's pretty brave of you, considering how the last one went. I have another truck, and a scratch-built battle wagon. A scratch-built battle wagon, this close in, into your start of the hobby. Well done, well done. I've been working on, so I was really excited to get it on the table. I show up this time, uh, and the table is already set up, and he has already decided the deployment zones. First unnoticed red flag. Yeah, yeah. If I turn up to a game and the opponent says you're deploying there, um, are you sure, my friend? <laughs> are 
Are you sure we're not rolling off for that? Uh, looking back at the terrain layout on the board reveals a lot of things that I didn't notice about this game. Let me set the scene. My army is three trucks with boys inside, a battle wagon with Gazgul, a buggy, and a death dread. Big things that need a decent amount of room to do their thing. He brought a similar list to the last time, but with a redemptive dreadnought and a bunch of shooting units and his terminators. The table was incredibly one-sided. A large open area in the middle, tightly packed ruins on one deployment zone, and two buildings on the other, with a big open battlefield between them filled with craters, minus two to move. Needless to say, no matter which way the rolls go, I'm basically forced to deploy in the open field. Yeah, see, see all of your um, vehicles can move. But without with a minus two to move. <laughs> uh, a few friends have told me since then that I should have told him that I didn't want to play on that terrain. As I am goths. Yeah, run in your face melee. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's how we play orcs. But I was new and was grateful he had saved us the time of getting going. So I didn't think anything of it. I roll a crazy advance on one of the trucks to start my move. And my units uh, uh, end up up the field only to realise... The ground is littered with difficult terrain, cutting two inches off of all of my movement. Shooting phase was a joke, as all of the stuff in the open he had he had for me to shoot at well, had minus one to hit because of the ruins. Orcs now hitting on a six plus. Uh, I don't think it's minus one to hit. I think ruins. Yeah, that's not how that works. Ruins give you a better save. They don't. Um, they don't take minus one to hit unless it's unless there's some sort. Some sort of weird rule that I don't know of that's on this piece of terrain. But if it's just a normal ruin where you can see the guy inside but he's in a ruin or behind a, a wall or something, it just makes a save one better. It doesn't do anything else. He then op opened fires on my army and kills half of my army in one turn. The Redemptive Dreadnought blew up my truck with one hit from his pl from its plasma something or other, then gunned down three, three out of four of my squad inside with his Gatling gun. Top of turn 2, and I have about 80, 800 points of models on the field to his 1300. Still, and I was starting to feel a frown on my face. He was laughing and cheering on his shooting while I just stared in awe at the carnage that took place. I let him make a few more moves before telling him that I'm done. He then tells me, before you go, let's take a second to reflect on that game. Oh, how nice of him. Yes, yeah. He starts to explain to the, all, all three of my game-losing decisions. But I stopped listening shortly after. Yeah, I'm not surprised, man. I was so demoralized when I got home, I looked at my models I was going to paint and felt like it wasn't worth it. Yeah, um... There's more to this story, and I'll read the rest. But, um... Yeah, I, uh, we all know that feeling, okay? You're getting a really shitty time in the hobby, and you just feel like, you know, what is the point of painting these models? It takes me so long to paint them, and then somebody else just blasts them off the table. Um, this is why... Finding the right opponent is just as essential to finding the right paints and glues and models. You know, your opponent is a, is, an, is an integral part of your hobby, which people tend to neglect. They tend to, to give people the benefit of the doubt, and some, some people don't deserve the benefit of the doubt, to be honest with you. So, he says, Since then, I have played two players and, and two games, and they were awesome. One against a Necron player with a victory to my name, another to an Eldar player that ended in defeat, but Gazgul killed his avatar, and Orcs is never beaten. Uh, good lad, good lad, good lad. So it was a great game. I'm also building a revenge list to give Gazgul the story he deserves. I've also made a special tribute to my ha hatred of his bla of his black this Black Templar. Wow. Okay, good. Good lad. So it seems like you've learned your lesson. I don't need to give you any advice because you're already picking better opponents. But um, th yeah, this guy is the most orky orc player I've ever heard. And if, if I've... This guy's love of orcs will uh, only grow over the years, considering the way he writes his story. Because the way he says, like, like orcs are never beaten, and also, you know, even if you lose, it's a great game. I know a lot of orc players that are, are very much like that, because their the codex is so random all of the time. So, yeah. Uh, well done to you, my friend. You seem to have uh, cracked it when it comes to building lists. So, Steve R.O., or Steve Rowe says, Hey, you know, hey, howdy north. Uh, my oldest boy, 10 years old, loves your channel while we hobby. Good laughs and lessons learned uh, on good habits while gaming. Thanks. No problem, man. No problem. Um, so, a uh, special shout out to... Uh, let me just have it on down here. Da -da 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 -da. Alexander. 
Hope you're doing well, man. Hope your hobby is going well. Hope your dad's treating you well and he's going to buy you lots of models. Um, if he's not, then tell him I said that he needs to get his, his hand in his wallet and he needs to get you some models. All right? Let's keep it going on that one, right? And I heard you play Ultramarines, which we'll let you off with because it's, you know, decent start to the hobby. But if you haven't got Gilliman already, then, you know, I think your dad needs to uh, run down to the local hobby shop, don't you? In fact... Go on to Composite Games. The link is down below. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Love you both. Love you both. Carry on. Keep on keeping on. Doing the hobby. Anyway, I'm going to read your dad's story now, so uh, excuse me. So he says, I've got a feel-good story for you. I started the Warhammer 40k hobby during lockdown, so as did met so many others. Yep. Uh, got in with two buddies, the wife and my oldest boy. Your wife got into it? My God. I would say put a ring on it, but this man's head of the game. The local GW staffer was a great guy helping us figure out what we needed to get in. Okay. I settled on Ultramarines because this stuff is expensive and the decals are in the box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so my boy chose the same. Now, two buddies were single dudes with fluid cash and often gifted my son models. Some Outriders, troops, and even an Invicta. That's pretty cool. Simply because they just didn't want them. Here's the best part. That GW staffer that helped the four of us get going was a real guy. Every time we'd go in, he would simply listen to, to my my kid talk about how cool Ultramarines were and answer questions about lore and, or gaming for him. In December 21, the store was doing their Christmas stuff. Secret Santa games and whatnot. Well, time came to hand out gifts. We chilled out in the back of the store, not expecting anything because other than the staffer... We didn't. We didn't. Uh, sorry, we did not know anyone there. Then it happened. My boy's name was called. Someone or some people gifted him a Space Marine Combat Patrol box and the Calgar comic. We were floored, and he he wouldn't wait to. He couldn't wait to fill out the thank you card to the secret giver. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. And good for you for teaching him manners on on saying thank you to people who are buying him stuff. I'm sure you guys are gonna have a fantastic time in the hobby. And uh, if you're ever in the northwest of England, hit me up because you know. Grey Knights are always hungry, and uh, we're not big fans of Ultramarines either. So, you know, come and say hi. So, moving on. Uh, Konnichiwa Boyo. Konnichiwa Boyo. Says, hey man, loving the channel. I've only got into the hobby around January after years of umming and ahhing about starting this rabbit hole of a hobby. So Thursday just gone, it was my third day at my new job working at, as a mental health liaison at the hospital. Loving it already, especially as I got paid 300 odd that day, even though I'm brand new, and I thought I'd missed the cutoff for payday. A lovely perk at the NHS. Lovely, brilliant. So after a 13 hour long day of my brain being attacked with loads of new information and medical jargon, I thought I'd treat myself and buy a model for my unnamed, doom inspired Space Marine Army. And I've seen pictures of this army, guys. It's pretty fucking cool. After sinking 70 quid into my car for diesel and a little sickened, I headed to the... To the hope, you, hope you weren't sick with COVID or anything. I hope it's like you're sickened because the petrol costs that much. Uh, sorry, diesel. I headed to a hobby shop that was open until 10 p.m. Head into the store, excited to browse some second-hand and new models. As soon as I enter, I'm hit with a huge train of BO. Obviously, I've heard stories that you've had on your videos about people with bad hygiene, and I never could have imagined it smelling that bad. Loads of people are having some card games of Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh yeah, th there you go. Then I'll do it. And uh, Sorry if you play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> but all you people fucking stink. And what not. And the fellow in charge of the of the shop stood up from a table and greeted me and told me to shout for him if I needed any help. Well, at least he's being polite. Think I confused him a little with the sickened look on my face. Well, you'd think with being working for the NHS, you're, you're used to weird smells, so that must have been bad. I tried to look at the many second-hand models that they had, but I honestly couldn't concentrate with how bad the smell was. It was quite a big shop and you just couldn't escape it. I'm a big fella myself, he says, but I'm always making sure I'm not absolutely honking and putting deodorant on an aftershave. I'm already self-conscious enough being a thick boy, don't need to be stinking as well. It's very puzzling that people can be that unaware that they stink. 
Anyway, I buy a Predator as I wanted a cool tank for my army and take off into the sunset or night and escape the stinky hobby store. Like you've said, you've done you've done in your videos, shop workers and managers need to pull people aside and have a little chat and ask them nicely to come in with a bit of good hygiene because now, sadly, whenever I think of going back to that shop, I'll be a bit apprehensive and it is now the stinky shop. Anyways, here's a picture of two of some, of my model, of some of my models I've done recently and would appreciate any feedback and any great tips for painting any cool details I can try. In fact, um, yeah, uh, listen, Konnichiwa, get in contact again because when I, I click on your message, it, it goes to be not highlighted. So contact me again and I'll give you some tips because I did see a few things that are, uh, it's a really cool model, but like obviously things you either haven't been taught yet. Or things that would just add to the model that's already looking really good. So yeah, yeah, get in touch. Oh, um, keep up the good work on the channel. Thank you very much, man. And next time I want some new models, I'll definitely check out your sponsor. Cheers, cheers, Kanichiwa. Good luck, good lad. And there's no smell. So I've been told. <clears throat> but yeah. So looking into the smells in a, in a hobby store. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is completely... The responsibility is on not just the hobby store owner or manager and is also on the people coming in to be held to a higher standard of hygiene um i always made sure my sport my store was smelling nice no matter who was in there or what was going on and if somebody was spoiling that they would be getting a talking to um not not in a nasty way just in an honest way i did have one guy and i think i've said this before where i pulled him outside to talk to him and i said listen man you know um i've just noticed there's a bit of an odor you know, like, have you been to the gym or something? Because I've got I've got spray here you can use. I use it because I, I, I smell when I've been in here all day. You know what I mean? And he said, no, no, I've just got off work, mate. But to be honest with you, he said, I've got no sense of smell. So it wasn't his fault, right? He, he, just, he, he just can't smell anything. So I I said to him, all oh, right, no, no worries. Do you, want, do, you want the, do you want the spray? He goes, no, I'm going to go home and get a shower and I'll be back in about 10 minutes. And he, and he did. And that was it. Right, so, you, so if you are a store manager and you're expect, ex, expecting a bad re response, number one, you're not to know if there's a medical reason for him smelling bad. And as soon as he there is one, then just say, hey, man, don't worry about it. I'm here to support you. Blah, blah, blah. Do all that, right? And if they're going to get pissy with you because you pulled out the fact that they smell and they're getting offended, well, I'm sorry. Grow up. Put your big boy pants on and wash your balls before you put your big boy pants on, right? That's it. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> We're going with Gravy Grave next. Let's see what uh, old good old Gravy Grave has to say. All right. Uh, he said, "It seems like you have a lot of emails." I thought this did. not We've all been conversing, by the way, guys. So this is your 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 joining conversation in media res. He says, uh, "It seems like you've had a lot of emails." I thought this didn't work and have been trying to tell the story a few times. Sorry for the spam. No problem. So, before I, fun fact, before I had the mailbag, I was losing a lot of messages because I would get so many that they would just get buried and I wouldn't find them because I just don't have the time, right? You know, uh, now I've got the mailbag. I know what's there is what I need to actually come and address, which is really cool. Um, emails too work. So, if you email me, that also works because uh, I've got, only got one on email this week, but uh, it's a doozy. But I'll get into that one next. So, the other story. He says, So I work in an office, and most of the colleagues are women. No complaint there. So if they've asked what are my hobbies, I happen to show them a painted model I have with me on, on, on a gaming day. Friendly local game game club is just a few tram stops away after work. The reactions have been a mild, Oh, that is cool, yeah. Oh, you've got a pair of balls on you, man. Hello, ladies. What do you do? What do you, what, you know, I, I, I go out and I, I go drinking with the girls. I go to my gym and all that, you know. Got to keep the ass looking fit in these yoga pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so what do you do? Well, uh, don't know if you know about Space Marines, but I uh, think you'll find this guy here quite the model painter. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, still a pair of balls. Well done. Anyway, one summer we get a summer temp, a younger guy who says he who says, "Hey, 40k, I played that, but now honestly I just paint." 
and he shows me pictures of great looking chaos models. Yeah, neither of you two are getting laid. I'm just going to come out and say that now. Um, it shouldn't be the case. Because Warhammer 40k is a game for chads. You know. But we are chads that fly under the radar. You know. Anyway. Q forward a couple of years. Attempts being a part-timer. But now decides to focus on his studies full-time. And leaves the company. On his last day he pulls me aside and asks. Do I want his 40k stuff that's sitting in his basement? And of course... Um, the plastic crackhead replies, do I ever? Sadly, this doesn't include his pro-level Chaos Space Marine models, bummer there. I get a ride there and he brings out two to three big boxes of all kinds of models, and even some stuff still in boxes, in mint condition. Jackpot! I do an inventory and get loads of Drakari for me, and even more Marines. Then I unload to my friends with pennies for a dollar, but still, make actually quite a few euros. I don't remember the exact inventory of, of my Ducari, but it was at least Lelith, three, uh, three Slith, is that? Three Raiders, Witches, etc. And as I calculated the GW prices, it was well over 200 euros. That's cool, man. Excellent. I thank him again via text and realise, fuck, I've got to paint these. One thing you have to understand, when we are talking about 40k and me, is that I love playing the game and enjoy scratch building slash modding models. But I hate painting. But a solution is found from the gentleman whose great unclean one is now in the warp. Ah, from the from our last from our last story from you, which is pretty cool. All right, fair enough. If you don't know that one, it's in our previous video. Go and check it out. He was just leaving the country to his homeland after a work stint in my country, and I agreed with him that he'll paint them and pack them and send them to me. That's pretty cool. A few months roll by, he's been busy with, with the new job and doesn't have the time to paint them. I ask him to ship them to me anyway, and I'll paint them when I get the urge. Again, a month or two goes by and I realise, where the fuck are my models? I asked him and he says he sent them a well over a month ago. Hmm. I ask him to check and he sends me this photo of, sent, of a sent package receipt. I see in the photo that something is missing. The company had shipped them, so... That 80% of the name and address were covered with the package, with the sticker and tape. Of course, my friend didn't buy the insurance for the package, because it would have been really expensive in the package, and the package ne if the package never arrives. I tried to find it in my, in my end by contacting the post office. The best lead they can find is that it was sitting in a wa some warehouse for weeks and was sent back, but was never found after that because the sticker had, got, had, had also covered the return address. So the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Got free models. I needed the Raiders. Lost free models. Ah, oh, dude, that fucking sucks. <laughs> but as you say, nothing ventured, nothing gained, I guess. But it does suck to have free models that are then, you know, taken out of your hand, so to speak. That really, really does suck. But, you know. Good story, man. I enjoyed it. And make sure, stop telling women in the office that you play 40k, alright? Just, you know, tell her that you go abseiling or you work on your abs or something. And you know, you got to introduce them to the weirdness slowly. You know, what I like to do is on the second date, if they come back to Shea Exile, um, the the Chateau Exile, shall we call it? They uh, they they find one model, you know, left in a left in a conspicuous place. Oh, what's this? Oh, just something I've been painting up. Something I might get into. You know. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. She isn't really listening at that point because you know they don't really listen. Um. And then the next few dates, you start saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know that model thing? Yeah, I'm doing that again this weekend. I've got a load of friends, and then we do, you know, and you introduce them that way. They're already in at that stage, you see. They're on, they're on the third or fourth date. They can't get out. So they're like, oh, my God, this guy's a fucking weirdo. Plays with models. And you're like, yeah, I know, but, you know, now you know how good I am in bed. No, I'm, only, I'm joking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but that's, you know, that's what you do. You get to, like, the third or fourth, you know, the third or fourth date and then you start introducing the weird shit it's like, uh, yeah yeah this i do 40k and by the way i have mandalorian pajamas and you know hey anyway moving on enough about me so <clears throat> uh, our last story is a bit of a bit of a sad one to say the least uh so <laughs> it is from long strider 89 and he did tell me I could use his name, but I'm not going to for the sake of anonymity because this person still works for Games Workshop. 
<clears throat> he says, Hi North, I just wanted some general advice, really, as I run my own store in the Midlands, Games Workshop, and I've come across a spot of bother. Well, tragedy, really. One of my regulars, a dude named Steve, who looks a bit like Space Marine Steve from YouTube, he also plays Iron Hands. So Space Marine Steve, I think he's from uh, Play on Tabletop, if you're looking for a visual, visual primer there for what this guy looks like. He also plays Iron Hands. He was really liked in the store, and we've even shared more than one pipe together whilst heading out with the group. Out of nowhere, a few weeks ago, his mum comes. Uh, his mum visited on the on the hobby night, uh, holding back tears, and asked to speak to me in my office in the back. Steve had taken his own life over that weekend, and I'd been pretty troubled for a while and not told anyone. I was devoted, which is English for devastated. I was dev. I was devoted to say the least, and she asked me to tell his mates in the store, which I did, at the end of the night and allowed them to stay way past closing with mugs of tea, painting models, and talking about Steve. His mum stayed for a bit, which was nice, and I showed her Steve's models that were in the, di the display cabinet, and she took some home with her. I got a call the next morning, angrily asking me why my store was open later than usual, and the cashing up was not done until one in the morning. This happens if we keep things open, uh, as to be fair... HQ tried to keep people safe, and they can't do that if they don't know your store is open, but still, bad timing on their part. I told them what was up, and to be fair, they backed off, which, that's good, man, that's good. I'm very happy they did back off, there's, there's more to this story, and I'll get into it in a minute. Um, but yeah, yeah, GW, it depends on, um, well, it depends on if they catch you or not. I, I, I used to open my store a lot longer than I had to, and I never really got a phone call. I was told not to do it by my trainer, but I was making too much money to stop, so I just carried on doing it. Um, but hey, you know, you, you you spoke to them. That's the main thing. You were upfront and honest about it. That's the main thing. Anyway, the crux of the matter. Steve's little brother, David, comes in. Now, Steve was a relatively well-off game dev, but his family do not have very much to say to say the least, because Steve would help them out a lot from my understanding, right? So Steve would actually help his family financially. Okay. David had never been to the store or been into the, uh, or been into the models, really, but the Iron Hands his mum brought back reminded him of his brother, so he wanted to come in and check it out. That's cool. The lads in the store gave him a lot of attention and basically spoiled him rotten, allowing him to play with their armies and gave them with them and get a handle on things. One of the lads told him about the Sons of Medusa chapter, when Dave mentioned he loved the Salamanders because of their green and black tint. Dave declared he wanted to do Sons of Medusa, if he ever got into the hobby, but would have to wait until Christmas. Alright? And he, and Longstrider says, Well, I'm not fucking having that, mate. I need this lad to get into the hobby sooner, as he told me this is basically how he feels closer to his brother. Problem is, he has no money. I know you've had stories where people in the store pay for stuff, but we don't really live in an affluent area. I mean, it's alright, but I doubt any good Samaritan is coming in and dropping a deuce on some kid's new hobby gear, you know? What would you do? Cheers, mate, Longstrider. Okay. So, um, first of all, that is a really shitty thing to happen in the store, and I'm really sorry that, you know, you had to go through that. And my condolences to, um, to Dave, to David and his mum, and... You know, rest in peace, Steve. Saying that, let's get into... This actually happened to... very similar thing happened to me. But although I didn't meet this guy's brother, he did have a brother. And he got a... He managed to get a, a gift voucher from the store. But uh, there was once when I was playing a guy who was playing Dark Eldar in the store that I worked in. I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a, I wasn't a manager there. And this is another good thing that my... Dickhead manager did. He, he gave this guy a, a I think it was two, I think it was two gift vouchers for a hundred quid, which is pretty cool. Um, asked him not to not to do it in his store, which is a bit of a dickhead thing to do. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but he, he gave him like two hundred quid worth of stuff, which is pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, this guy would come in and he'd play Drakari, and he was pretty quiet. He looked like a normal average guy, and he would, you know, uh, the last game. I believe he played might have either have been with me or the other staffer in the store. We both played him on one night, but I'm not sure which one of us played him second. Um, he never came back. He, he, he was a really nice guy. 
He was pretty quiet, stuck to himself, you know. Uh, and a week later, um, he actually came into Sainsbury's when I was doing my shopping. And he saw me and said, hey, man, how are you doing? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, man. How are you? And they got doing small talk. And he said, listen, um, I'm selling some of my models. You know, would you be interested in buying a Land Raider? And I was like, oh, no, man, I've already got like two Land Raiders. I don't really need another one. I uh, gave him the number of a few people to call who might be interested in his models, one of which was the other was the other staff member that we had. And, yeah, um, I I never saw him again. That was it. And we got one of his friends came in uh, about a week later and said, yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd taken his own life. He'd, he'd committed suicide, which was a an appalling day at work, to say the least. Um, I recently heard from other people who have gone through similar things with their friends is that, what he was doing and selling his models is he was preparing himself and his family for him leaving, like getting everything off of their hands and so they didn't have to sell anything and he could give that money to them when he died, which is a fucking tragic thing to 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 hear. But, uh, but well, that's probably what he was doing anyway. But, but it's possible to know for sure what's going through somebody's mind when they make that ultimate, you know, decision. It's the ultimate act of despair, isn't it? You know, and uh, my heart goes out to anybody who feels like they have to make that choice, to be honest with you. Um, as I've told you on this channel before, I, I've only ever been in that situation once, truly. Um, it wasn't fun. And um, I, yeah, I, I'm now glad I didn't do it or didn't do anything stupid. But uh, yeah, there was one, one time in my life where it was pretty close. So I've got some semblance, like a 10% semblance of what's going on in somebody's mind when they, when they get to this point. But anyway... Um, here's my advice, my friend. So, I would do one of a few things. And I'm going to give you a few ideas to go off of. Number one, if you want to, get in contact with head office and get something worked out where you can get this kid some models for free. I will give you the contact number of somebody. Please message me back. I'll give you the contact number of somebody at HQ. Who can sort that out for you. Um, this isn't an offer I extend to just anybody. So please don't anyone else message me. Because that would be a really shitty thing to do. Um, this person is a really cool person. They they normally work with schools. And things like that. And they send out a copious amounts of stuff to schools. I'm talking 4,000 points worth of armies to schools on a regular basis. For nothing. So um, I'm sure that she can hook you up with something. Um... And again, and before anyone complains that I outed her, her gender there, most of the people working in the office tend to... It's nearly... It's 50-50, you know, in, in terms of gender over there. So, um, But yeah, I'll give you her contact number and I'll email her and tell her, uh, and tell her that you're going to call. Just message me first and I'll email her, then I'll give you the number, okay? That's number one. That, that's option number one. Option number two, okay, is call up head office yourself and give them the story, give them exactly what you just told me, and ask them to send you a care package of like 2,000 points of um, of Iron Hands. Now, if you tell them Iron Hands, right, they may throw in some Forge Weld stuff in there as well. If they send you stuff, they may throw that in as well. If you, if you, if you are that specific. Especially if you use the number I give you. She will be that specific because she's that kind of a person, right? So, um... They may say no. I'm not going to say they're going to say yes. They, 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 the normal office may say no. Um, um, you know, friend of mine won't, but the you know, normal office may, if you want to go that route. If they do, your third option for me is to get all the lads together in the store, and instead of every, instead of one or two people buying a couple of hundred pounds worth of stuff, <clears throat> instead, get everybody to give you a five pound or a ten pound note, right? Everybody who knew Steve. Five pound or a ten pound note, and throw in like say whatever money you've got hanging around yourself, right? Even if you have to go to friends and family, that's fine, you know. Aim, aim for around two hundred quid, right? Get two hundred quid together, pool as much as you can for this kid, right? Then use your staff discount to buy. You're allowed to buy gifts on the staff discount. You're allowed to buy gifts on the staff discount, so. Buy £400 worth of iron hands or, or, or things that can be made into iron hands from your own store. 
That means the money is going in your till, so you're getting a nice bonus that week. You know, so you're getting a pat on the back for getting a big sale. And you're also using your staff discount, so it's only going to cost you 200 quid to get 400 quid worth of models. And then you then you gift them to him. So those are your three options, my friend, okay? None of which will get you into any trouble. Um, number three you should use if number two falls through, essentially. But I would I would personally go with number one and um, see, what, see what she comes up with. I, I think that she'll be able to get you some pretty cool stuff there. In terms of people dealing with, with Suicide Man, when you want to deal with Dave in the store, um, openness and kindness is the best way to do it. And... One thing that I would do, and I had this thought when I was I was sitting in bed last night reading this, and I had this thought. When he paints his Sons of Medusa, why don't you, as a nice little project, known lost something in the store, one or two kits in the store, for a store project, and why don't you build him a custom chapter master that you name after Steve? Yeah? Name him Stavos or something, you know, whatever. But you, you say, yeah, this is this is him. This is your, you know. And maybe even uh, take one of the arms from one of Steve's old models and put it on the new one and, and keep it black, you know, as a as a mark of, like, you know, mourning or respect or something. That'd be a super, super cool thing to do. Other than that, make sure he's having a decent time in the hobby, man, and make sure he's never feeling left out. Make sure he's always included and, and is right at the centre of what's going on at the store. It may be tiring, you know, but you need to do that. You need to make sure we need to look after this kid. And if you need to, um, put him in touch with me and the channel. I've got a few YouTube friends as well who would who would happily send him, you know, send him a few emails or, you know, exchange pleasantries with him if he's into that kind of thing. So send me an email and, uh, and we'll get that sorted out for you, okay? So that is... Hobby store stories, uh, well, hobby store nightmares for today, and some of them more, a lot more real than others. If you need to get yourself some models, Composite Games is right there uh, in the description down below. You get 20% off of most things in the store, and with my code Northern Exile, you get an extra 5% off. I don't get any money for this, by the way, but I do get um, complimentary models every now and again that I can use in prizes to give away on the channel. That's what I that's what I use your kickback money for. So, if you feel like supporting me, supporting the channel, head over to Composite Games and give them some love. Aside from that, guys, I love you all long time. Have a really good day. And if you are struggling, message me. All right? Daddy Exile is here for you. Love you all long time. See you later.